Hey, what's up everybody? Just gonna do a video to go over some of the things I had gotten done today on the 265 for that puppy. Um, it's a slow process. Uh, believe me, I wish it was something that would happen quickly, but then again, Good things come to those who wait, and uh, what I've realized in life, uh, the journey is just as fun as uh, the end result. So, um, one thing I was looking at today on the car, um, this is the original generator bracket. And you can see how it's got almost like a spring-loaded, spring-loaded, uh, more or less. They're not really bolts, but they're just, you know, you would slide that through there and then squeeze back the washer. And I don't, I don't know if that is the correct apparatus. I'm not real sure about that. But this is how I, this is how I took it off of the, this is how I took it off of the engine. Like the power steering pump was being held on, the generator and power steering pump was being held on by them. Spring loaded. Maybe to give the generator a little bit softer, take some of the vibration out of it. I'm not real sure. But anyways, I got to clean that up and it's. It's real simple. You could just put 5 16 bolts in there. But I almost wanted to do some research. I'm not 100% sure if them are original to 55 or not. Most of the time, when I get a 55 Chevy or a Tri-5 or any old car, really, a lot of times it don't have the original motor, so you don't know exactly what is what. Uh you know what's original what's not but a couple little things here then i'll show you what i was doing to the engine so give me one second i had on one of my last videos i had uh whoops taken out a a dash out of a firewall down at my work so i went through all my bolts today because i've got so many original bolts just looking for certain bolts and stuff but i found this and this was out of a 56 that i had a couple years ago and this is the first one that i've ever seen that actually said push on the tumbler um so i'll probably clean that up and put that in that uh that dash that i'm trying to assemble for a wall hanger and on the other uh, firewall that's down there that's got the ignition that's locked out of the really rusty Nomad, this is the tumbler out of the glove box. Now I can cheat and have a key cut to that code. That's the key code. What's that? 9257. When these cars was brand new, one key would unlock the ignition, um, the glove box, both doors, and the trunk. So if I had a key cut to that key code, I'm sure if I wiggled it, it would unlock that ignition. So I know what the key is that unlocks that. that uh, it's right there. 9257. That's the key code. And all that is is this tumbler. You see the front of it. All that is is a tumbler out of a out of the glove box off of that rusty firewall. So I did have one at one point. I'm trying to look back through all this junk because the one fifties didn't. The one fifty didn't take a. It didn't. You couldn't lock the glove box door. Yeah. Just drop some junk. But I don't see it right now. I have one in there that's out of a 150. 
Um, but I can't find it right now to show you guys. Oh, there it is. It was, it was hidden back behind here. But see, this is a 150. That's your 150 um, latch with no key. Like, I don't know what the, the point was of not putting a key in a 150. Um, and you can see somebody's jimmy this one. That one wouldn't have latched anyways. The little finger. It's got like a piece of cardboard or something on it. But, anyways... It's been a long day. You can see I'm the top pop. It's been a long day. I've been out in the out in the heat messing with this. The humidity today was pretty brutal. And this is some of the random stuff that goes to that that engine that I've been just kind of um, getting pieces and parts for it. So. And I still haven't done nothing with the water pump yet. But. What I did today on it was. Well, let me back up. I had my neighbor sandblast the manifolds. And they come out real good. This one over here has got. It's got some roughness to it. The Ohio, the Ohio weather has added up over the years, but that bracket I was showing you guys at the beginning of the video goes right there, and that's how your uh, generator attaches. And then this is the little sending unit. The guy told me that this was an NOS sending unit for a 55 Chevy. So... I screwed that in there and I actually primed this engine today but it didn't go too well but as you can see it's I've went through it's got all the rockers on it all the valves are they're roughed in it will absolutely start the way it is right now and then boom that side so I put the lifters in it the push rods in it and set up all the valves today in it. And I I put the I uh took the distributor out and I um put the prime the prime oil pump prime shaft in there for just a, a standard small block or big block, you know the one I was showing you, the universal one. And I actually held my finger over this little port right here. So it didn't blow no oil out. And it was actually building a lot of oil pressure there. But what happened after a while, oil started coming out the top of that pump, almost running out the back of the engine. So, and I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't going to act right because them distributors got a notch on the shaft of them. But then I went ahead and polished the valve covers. Just a real quickie on it. But it's, you know, it's exciting because this little engine is getting started, uh, getting closer to, uh, to firing up. And I, I got some oil up through there. That's that, uh, pin grade 30 weight break in oil. And I also took them bolts out and painted them today. That same cast aluminum color. This is really good stuff. Like if you, if you just lightly dust this across this intake, I mean, just like fan it, just fan it across that intake, it'll make that intake look like, like brand new aluminum. Not real heavy, just kind of fan it across there. It's the cast coat aluminum, but that's what this color is. The sides are chrome, and I don't know if this was rough in here or whoever had these chrome just didn't want them uh, chrome down in here. I could tell that they painted it that cast coat and then cleaned the sides back off to where it was all chrome. So I just painted the bolts that same, that same finish. But yeah, you could see there's, 
that green Brad Penn oil, or, well, Brad Penn. Now I'm dating myself. That's what pen grade used to be called, Brad Penn. Uh, it was, it was really forcing against my finger. Uh, and a lot of people said that external oil filter really didn't do much. Granted, I know this isn't, you know, the same pressure as what a standard small block filter would uh, produce but this is cranking some serious pressure coming out of here so i think it'll do pretty good it'll filter pretty good and then you know the 55 block there ain't no filter on it so but anyways um and then i i've been slowly cleaning stuff up like if you ever had a chevy small block and wondered what that stuff is it's for this right here and that's your wire looms. And then the other one, it's a little bit different shaped to clear the side of the, the head. But that's, that's your one for this side as well. And it's wanting to fall out. I gotta get the little bolt for it, but that's, and then your wires run. They run from the distributor, four down that side, four down that side. Because when this motor is dressed up, you won't see no spark plugs hanging. They run down, down the side, and then, um, yeah, there's a bolt right here, bolt hole there, and then there's one for, further up where, where your wires are all hidden underneath on both sides. And you can see the bolt right, right there, and then there's another one to where it comes. It, the wires come right down the sides, boom, boom, behind the manifold, boom, boom, to where when you're looking at this engine, when it's in the car, the whole top will be clear. You won't, all the wires will be hidden from the sides, you know, because back, back when these motors first come out, you know, it was, they was showing off what they had, what they had created, basically. This was like, you know, GM's masterpiece, General Motors, whether it was Chevy, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, they all had their own engines. It's not like, you know, nowadays where LS will fit in everything from the factory. Years ago, if you had a Chevrolet, it had a Chevrolet engine in it. So anyways, that's what I got done. The valves are all set. Got to start working on the other intake and just keep chipping away at it. And then one thing I was going to show you guys, that little that little wooden Chevy bow tie, I made that in wood shop, 10th grade. And this is like a little uh, shrine to my dad. These are all cars he, well, some of these right here aren't, but... These are models that he had actually built and the old Green Hornet and things like that and all them up there. And that's like uh, original service manuals, things like that. And them, them are called F and F's. Them come in uh, Cheerio boxes back in the 50s. So that's his little, that's his little shrine. But anyways, I show you guys one of them real quick. This is a this is an F and F. And what I heard is they come in a Cheerios box in the fifties. Me and my dad used to chase some little uh, F and S many years ago, probably in the early eighties. It's always hard to find them where, where like this little pillar right here wasn't broken out on them. It was like a, a great accomplishment. They're not worth a whole lot. And who knows if anybody even wants them anymore. But me and him collected them so many years ago that I just figured that instead of them just being boxed up in a cabinet or a box or something like that, that I would uh, give them a spot to show off. But anyways... Yeah, you know, we're we're getting there on that uh we're getting there on that uh little small block engine. Uh 
for me, it's getting exciting because I know, like, if that intake was bolted down on that thing, and you put a carburetor on there, dump some gas down it, and hot wire that distributor, that thing will start. It's getting that close, you know, internally. So one day, we're going to see what it'll do in that car. And I almost drove this car today. I had a clear path down the driveway, but uh, the humidity had got to me. So I actually went in and took a nap. But anyways, it's Sunday night. I got the top pop coffee going on there. So I try to get this edited up and get it up to you guys. And uh, I made a call to that junkyard that's about an hour away from here. And I'm going to probably try to go out there and see if I can find the bolt for that oil canister. That remote oil filter. Whenever he gives me a call back. So that should be pretty cool. Go out there and look at his stuff. There's a lot of cars out there, but anyways, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much uh, for all the support on the channel. I'll catch you guys on the next video.